Is this Teresa? Hey! Hey, it's my first time ever calling in. <laughs> Who is this? How are you? Tell your name for everyone in the live chat. Yes, um, I come from a different channel, Brian McFarland's channel. Okay. Are you aware of him? Yes. I'm the residue hunter. You know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah, I know who we're talking to. How are you doing tonight? Fine. I was on um, Scare Channel last week, and I figured it was time for me to venture out. There you go. You know, and let people know what I do and um, my story. I don't know if anybody cares to know my story. How, um, are, can I ask a question? Are you affected? Oh, I'm very awake. <laughs> very awake. Oh, good. Okay, good. Um, I wanted to share my story and how I felt um, the pre-awakening. I want to know if anybody else remembers the pre-awakening. Does that make sense what I'm saying? Yes, it does. When you first come in contact uh, with this before you're actually awake and it's kind of messing with your head. Yes. Um, my story, I, I've been awake about a year now. Mine started in December um, not just some of the just went by, but the December before about a year ago. So probably would be December 2016. Okay. Um, mine started, um, a few months probably before I woke up. Um, I knew things were off and I don't know how, how to explain this and it's going to sound kind of bizarre. I feel like I was walking around like in a dream state. Does that make sense? Like in a dream state? Like I knew things were not real. Like I would not be able to focus on things and see things clearly. Like it felt like sort of like having jet lag. That's the, only, that's the way I explained it to Scarab was it was like having jet lag. You're on a long trip. You get off the plane and you know your body's there, but your mind hasn't caught up yet. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. And in the few months that led up to my awakening, I was hearing like everybody else hears. I've heard, I got the, the buzzing in my ear. I was hearing a lot of strange noises that were coming from, I don't do drugs, I don't smoke, I don't drink, I don't do any of that. And I was hearing noises like explosion noises. And I live in Las Vegas, by the way. Um, this is, you know, I'm from the West. I, I moved from Florida, Orlando, Florida, in 2004 to Las Vegas, and I've been living here since. So it was a big change for me coming from Florida to Las Vegas. And when I lived in Florida, I had never had any paranormal experiences um, prior to the Mandela effect. And I've had a lot of strange things happening to me since I woke up. And like I said, the few months awakening... Prior to the awakening, I knew things were wrong. I just, I just, I look at things and I'll be like, that's wrong. That, that just don't look right. And I couldn't explain what was going on and how I woke up. It was actually, actually accidental. Um, I was in Facebook and I saw somebody talking about Skechers shoes. And for me, I've worn Skechers pretty much probably many years as long as they've been out. And I remember the T in them. And one day I saw the word Skechers, and the way they had it spelled was wrong to me. And I went, what? And I looked on my shelf, and I found that my Skechers that I remembered with the T had changed on me, and I freaked out. I could not sleep. I was, like, on Facebook going, oh, my God, oh, my God. And, and you know, everybody goes through the stages. With the Mandela effect, you go through the, the shock stage, you go through the depression stage, you go through the stage of well, why is this going on, and which is the stage I'm at now. I pretty much accepted it. I I take every day, no matter what's going to happen. I I actually had an experience happen to me about an hour ago. Um, Brian was doing like some, um, you know, life is like a box of chocolates. Um, video when he was doing a little traveling earlier today, and I decided just to see if I could find some residue, which 
I do residue hunting every day, pretty much my whole life now. Yeah. It's been all about residue hunting. Um, I found residue for life of like a box of chocolate. I was sitting in the clubhouse where I live. I live in an apartment complex. I played it. It said, life is like a box of chocolates. And I had the volume loud enough for my non Mandela friend heard me play it. And she said, oh, yeah, life is like a box of chocolates. And I shook my hand and I said, yeah. I decided to play the video over again. Guess what? Guess what? What? It changed. Really? It changed. Within less than five minutes. And then it said, life was like a box. And I went, what? And I looked at her. I said, did you hear that? She goes, oh, no, that's what it was. I said, no, it wasn't. Five minutes ago, you said, life is like a box of chocolate. I think they must have been some, like, programming to these non-Mandela people, like an up, like an up, um, uh, oh, what's the word that Brian used? Like an upgrade within minutes. Yeah, she an upload. She said, life is like a box of chocolate. Yeah. And, and, and she turned around. And said, no, I said, what? I said, no, you didn't. I said, my God, I wish I would have recorded this. And my video changed within less than, excuse me, less than five minutes. Wow. I'm going, is, was. And that's not the only experience I've had. I've had experiences that I've looked up residue on the computer. I've literally watched it change in front of me. On the computer. I'm not talking about a video. I'm talking about a still picture that I found that likes the Chick fil A, which I remember C H I C F I L A, and all of a sudden the K pops up. Yeah. I visually have witnessed not just that, other residue that's changed in front of me probably about six months ago, maybe a little bit longer. I had system residue to Brian. And I had posted it on Facebook, but I was on Facebook, and right now I'm still on Facebook, but I can't get on it because my stupid phone doesn't have enough room on the phone. Right. And I posted a bunch of little boxes that said Fruit Loops, spelled with the F-R-U-I-T, which I grew up on, and I remember because I used to, each color had a different fruit to me, like the purple was grape, and the red was cherry, strawberry, and each color represented to me a different fruit, and I used to tell my dad about it when he was alive. Oh, I love all these different color fruits. And that's how I remember it. Well, I posted it on Facebook. It said F-R-U-I-T. There was like 20 little teeny boxes. Yeah. I sent it to Brian. Brian saw it. Do you know within a day to two days after that, I went back and it changed? Really? All the posts that I did on several Facebooks literally changed to F-R-O-O-T. Brian and I freaked out. I said, Brian, look at your thing that I sent you the other day. He goes, yes, that's true. I said, look at it now. And he was like having a WTF moment. He was shocked. And, and, and it, I've gone to so many weird paranormal things. I went to have breakfast about six months ago. And there was a girl and a guy and another girl that came in. And they were eating breakfast. I saw the girl sit down. I looked straight at her shirt. It was like a burgundy, the white shirt. It said volunteers, and the first thing I thought was, oh, I wonder who she volunteers for. I looked down on my phone, waited for my food to come, looked up. Her, she, her shirt that she had on, the word changed and said queenie. She did not get up. She did not put on a sweater. She didn't put anything off. Her word on her, the word on her shirt completely changed to queenie, and I, like, freaked out. Really? And, and every, I've had so many weird paranormal experiences ever since I've had the Mandela effect. And another thing I took pictures of, which I sent to Brian, I know you're not going to believe this, but I've seen it. I live in Vegas. I took three pictures of it, um, and I sent them to Brian. He's got them somewhere with, with all the residue stuff that I've sent him. I saw a shape of a city in the sky. I witnessed it. Yeah. I'm literally, the first time I've seen it was February 9th. Of 2017, I remember the day I came home from work. Um, I got dropped off in the apartment because I don't have a car. My friend drops me off, my boss. Walked up in front of the apartment complex, looked up at the sky, and I'm looking, and I'm like, wait a minute. Now, I see what I'm seeing, and I'm standing there staring at it, trying to make sense of what I'm seeing. I literally could see a shape 
I was sitting in the sky. I'm not talking about low. I'm talking about high up. Right. And yes, it was cloudy. You could clearly see <clears throat> the shape of the city. I could see the skyscrapers. I could see the little buildings. And I'm standing there looking at this going, oh, my God. And people are just driving around, not even looking up. And I've had a lot of weird experiences. And, that, and I've seen that three times. Good pictures to Brian. Um, I still have the pictures at work. I keep them on my computer at work because my phone only has so much space on it. Brian, like, freaked out. I was like, Brian, do you see that? He goes, yeah, he zoomed in on it. I said, this was not Photoshopped. I have another picture that I took about a month ago. I was coming home from work, looking up at the sky, part of the clouds that was like a black and white spotted cloud was at the bottom of the sky, like the bottom. There was a huge line horizontally cutting half of it off. Like, in other words, say you took an eraser and you erased half of it. You could clearly see a horizontal line cutting half of the sky off. Wow. In the sky. Ryan has that picture. Anytime I see any bizarre pit, anything bizarre in the sky, I take pictures to document it. I keep all my documentation together. Um, like I said, on the computer at work, because like I said, more storage. And Brian and I just freak out. I, I seen too much to explain. And all this has happened within the last year, after the you know after the Mandela effect. And yes, I I can't walk away from it. I literally go anywhere. And it like, I see it. It's like, I'm so awake. Like, Joyce Myers to me is now Joyce Meyer. That was a recent one for me. Yeah. My book, I tripped over my book in my living room. It was like a magazine. I looked down and it said Joyce Meyer. I remember Joyce Myers. Don Edwards, I tripped over a couple months back when we were going to do a live show. Now it's John Edwards. And it's like, it wants to find me. Wait, John Edwards like, is now John Edwards? Yes. Yes. There's look it up. A, if you want to look it up right now, you're going to freak out. John Edwards is not John Edward. Joyce Myers is Joyce Meyer. Yeah. I find these things, and Brian's like, how do you do it? And I'm like, I think because I don't know if you believe, but I'm an empath. I'm empathic, which I found out a few years ago, not knowing that it was going to get stronger. And I don't know if you know about the other recent change. You heard about the hand changing, right? What's that? The hand. What do you mean? No, Look I haven't. Your hand. Look at your hand. Yes. Look where your thumb is located at now. It's down near the wrist. Look yeah. how much space you have between your finger, your pointer finger, and your thumb. Look at all the space you have. You can take your thumb now and touch the bottom of your pinky. If you take your thumb and bend it over... You can now do that. I could not do that before. Never. Take your take your thumb and stretch it over to reach your your um, pinky finger. You're going to be shocked. Yeah, I, I know. Okay. Do you, you see it? Yeah. Our hands are messed up. Our hands are now really longer now. Um, like I said, the thumb and the, the, the pointer finger is now longer. The thumb is further down on the wrist. I don't know how what they're doing to our bodies. We're getting upgrades, and they're coming, like, slowly. Um, but it's noticeable enough where you can see it. You know what I mean? Like, I know the back of our head looks like Worf now from Star Trek. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> um, and I even spoke to my hairstylist a few months ago, and I asked her about that. And I said, do you remember the back of the head looking like this? And she's kind of indelicated. She went to school to cut hair. She's a hairstylist. She's been cutting hair probably 10, 15 years. Right. She said that back of the head wasn't like that. I went to school to learn the school to cut hair. I would love to get her on the air and let her talk about that. Oh, she absolutely. Said, no, the back of the school did not look like that. Um, did you want to, oh, I'm sorry, I'm just talking to you. Up. Did you want to ask me about residue hunting, how I do it? Yeah, go right ahead. Tell us. I'm, we're, we're, we're really interested. Okay. Um, the way that I find residue is you have to kind of trick the computer. The way that you do it is when you look something up, you use quotation marks. For example, you put quotation, 
Jiffy peanut butter, quotation marks. Do you force the computer to look it up? Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. It absolutely does. That's one of the things that I do. Um, another secret that I do is I put in the word vintage. Before I look something up, sometimes I'll be like, okay, vintage Jiffy peanut butter. Um, a couple months back, I found an amazing one that Ryan was shocked. Did you know the owner and the, the person who invented originally the Jiffy peanut butter used to raise horses for like racing horses? He named one of his horses Jiffy peanut butter. I found that residue. Wow. Now, why he would he name his horse? Yes. Why would he name his horse Jiffy if it's called Jiff? You know? That, there you go. That's what sales, that's what I told Brian. I said, why would he name his horse Jiffy Peanut Butter? And then it turned into Jiff. You know, it's like uh, one of my videos got hit by the Mandela Effect. And I did a video a couple years ago on mm -hmm. Looney Tunes, you know, and, uh, uh, how it's T-U-N-E-S now, and it used to be T-O-O-N-S, Looney Tunes. And I connected it to um, Tiny Tunes, because Tiny Tunes is Tiny, T-O-O-N-S. Now, why would Tiny Tunes be O-O-N-S when Looney Tunes is U-N-E-S, you know? But I did this video on this, and it was like, like six months after I did the video, um, somebody on Facebook got a hold of me and said, uh, hey, brother, did you know that your video has changed? And I said, what are you talking about? And he wow. said, go watch your video. So I went back and I watched it because it's not that long. It's like 10 minutes long. You know what I mean? And uh, yeah. it, it's it's not the visuals that I was showing. It's what I was saying. Uh -huh. I was speaking to the camera with me looking in the camera. And the words that I was saying, that all changed. And I went, yeah. I know that was wrong because I recorded it and it took me five different times to get it right. And I know what I said. And what's on YouTube now is not what I said. So I checked on my computer. And you know what? That might be another version of you because Brian, Brian said that to me. He'll go back and be like, did I say that in that video? And I'm like, maybe it's another version of you. So I think we shift. I mean, there's times I'll wake up in the morning. And I'll have so much energy, and I'm like, I'm normally really tired and worn out, and I don't want to do anything. I think we have different versions of ourselves that we're shifting into. Does that make sense? I tend to stick, personally, I tend to stick to uh, um, prophecy and, and, and last days. And I have a theory on yeah. this that I've, been, that I've been following here, uh, especially recently. I even did a video on this. Um, and it has to do with particle entanglement and what they're doing. Oh, wow. And not only with CERN, but there's several LHCs around the world, um, not just CERN. CERN's the big one. Can I, can I ask you what religion you are? I'm, I was raised Catholic. Um, I was raised Protestant, but I fell okay. away from the faith, and I was away from it for a very long time. And then I got into, um, yeah. into the bands and into the music, which led to... Uh, into occultic activities and getting into, you know, oh, wow. all the dark roads. And, and I, I went down some really, really bad paths, you know, but um, God kept me alive because he had a purpose for me. Have you had Meeks on your show before? Have I had what? Meeks? Meeks? No. Meeks. Do you know, she had a video on um, yesterday, I think it was yesterday or last night in the middle of the morning. Do you know residue is known in the Bible 42 times? No, I didn't. I hadn't co come across that one. Yes. Yes, residue is not in the Bible 42 times. And I told Brian this morning, I said, Bible, I said, Brian, you need to look at your Bible. He's like, what? I said, look at me, this new video. I said, residue was not in the Bible. No, it There's wasn't. all these words that's popping up in the Bible, especially the new, um, the new, <laughs> what are they called? The new, gee, new, I can't remember the name. You know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. The new, and there's words that are appearing that doesn't make no sense. And some of it is, it's like somebody trying to rewrite the Bible. And I don't know if you see that. Oh, absolutely. I, I thoroughly stand behind that, that that's, um, that's directed there. I mean, that's, 
uh, what I'm saying is the Mandela effect is a side effect to what they're actually trying to do, but they can literally control what happens in the side effect. And I do believe they're intentionally changing the Bible. Now, let me, let me throw at you what I was talking about. Um, okay. Particle entanglement, okay? Everything in our world, our reality, your car, your desk, your TV, even you, everything is made up of subatomic particles. Now, what they're doing in these LHCs is they're smashing particles together and disintegrating them, okay? They're blowing them apart so that they can see what the particle itself is made of. They're looking for the gluons, the nuons, the Higgs bosons, and all these other exotic things. And they have purpose and meaning as to why they're doing this. But here's the deal. Yeah. When you, when you, and I understand because I, I got a science background. Um, when you get into particle theory and you get into quantum physics and you get into string theory, um, it is explained that one particle is not entangled with another particle. One particle can be entangled with billions and trillions of other particles. And what you do to one particle, whatever particle is entangled to that one particle, that happens to that other particle that's entangled to it. So if you disintegrate this particle, you just disintegrated a billion, a trillion other subatomic particles in the subatomic world. Now, when they crash these, part, these beams together, they're crashing together literally millions of particles at one time, which means you've got to take millions of particles and then you've got to times it by billions or trillions of particles to give you the number of how many particles in the subatomic world are being disintegrated at one time. Now, if our real world is made up of subatomic particles and you are constantly reducing the number of particles that are in the subatomic world, you absolutely positively have to have a real world effect in the macro world, the world we live in, because you're reducing the number of particles. And then how those particles that are left over re-entangle with one another changes our reality. Wow. Does that make sense to you? Traveling or anything like that because everybody's got these theories of oh, we died in 2012 and our bodies, our consciousness were tra transferred to other bodies and another reality. Do you really think that we're still on the same earth? That was one of my questions. Are we still on our same earth? Are we on a different earth? See, I believe what it's, it's a, think about that? I believe it's the same earth, but I think it's being altered because of the number of particles that are being reduced that's having an effect on our real world. Um, it's like if you could if you could bake a cake and you got a, a cake that's baked and now you have the ability some type of technology that was given to you that you could beam into that cake and reduce some of the ingredients in that cake just take it out mm -hmm. what you have left over is a different cake you understand what I'm saying because you've taken ingredients in that cake you, you you've beamed them out like like on Star Trek you know you beamed out that ingredient out of it, so that cake no longer has that ingredient, so now it's a different creation. And that's the same way I see it with the, with, with the subatomic world. With the sub and how is it going so far back, some of these changes, like the John F. Kennedy car, like I remember before, I mean, and I'm going to tell you my age, because you're probably not going to believe me, but I'm going to tell you, I was born 11, 12, 63. I was born two weeks <laughs> before the John F. Kennedy assassination. And I remember seeing four people in the car. I don't ever remember John Connolly and his wife. I remember two of the people. You know, right. the driver, Me too. the bodyguard. Yeah, and, and that's what I'm saying is, how can everything be going back as far as, you know, the 60s? No, I don't know if anything goes back now, beyond that. Now, I, I, I have a theory. I have a theory on that also. And this may actually make sense to you. Um, what happened when Kennedy got killed, um, that history did not change. That really happened. That's exactly how it happened. But everything in our present world that indicates that that happened, everything in the present world has changed, including people's memories. So therefore, nothing in the past has actually changed. 
but everything in the present that looks back to that history has changed. So therefore, we see now a video with six people in the car because the video in our present world has been changed. But the history actually hasn't. And those of us that are awake, we're actually remembering the true history. And those that aren't, yeah. they've been upgraded to what is presently being changed in our present world right now. So they see it as being... So, so, so why then why is a majority of us awake? What do we have that's going for us, which I was trying to explain to Brian earlier, why are we, like, are we considered, like, the chosen ones? Or, I mean, do we, a resistance to the change? Or what is it that we all have in common that we can see the changes and say, hey, that's wrong? What is it that we have? I mean, what do you think about that? Like, I, I tend to lean different? towards those of us that are awake um, have been selected by God to be protected from these changes. That, that even includes those that wow. are not saved, those that are New Agers. God's even selected them for them to be protected for whatever reason or purpose. I'm not going to try to explain God's thinking because he's uh, me trying to explain God's thinking and how he thinks and what he does is sort of like the ant that's crawling across the floor. That's going to explain how I think and act. You know what I mean? Can't do it. So we're like chosen. We're chosen. Yes, I do believe that. So we should feel, I'm not going to be, I, I feel special though that I was chosen for this. I mean, being awake is awesome. I mean, sure, I'm not the same person no more. I, I don't know if people are awake now are just still the same person. I had a whole different personality when I was asleep. But now when I'm awake, I'm completely different. Oh, I'm also closer to God. I yeah. am more religious now. Yeah, you. everyone that's awake, uh, and, and I, I use this, and some people say it's semantics, but it helps me in my own mind. Those that have, that have been changed that don't see any of the changes... I see that they have been effected, you know, with an E, affected, because they've been changed. They don't see it. Now, those of us that are seeing the changes, we've been affected with an A, A-F-F, -F, we're affected by it, which absolutely has to have a change in your personality. Every single one of us is, is, is different now because of this, and a lot of people have gotten a yes. lot closer to God because of it. Yes, and that's a good thing. A lot of times people see Mandela effect. Um, made it worse for them, but I believe the majority of people are better off being affected. I mean, I, I can see things so much clearer now. You know what I mean? Yes. It's, it's a very good thing. That it's a very, very good thing. And it's brought me closer to another group of people, which you know I, you know what I'm saying when I'm on the show and everything. Um, it's brought me more friends. It's brought me more empathy towards other people and it's just it, it's just a, it's a great thing being awake and i mean i wish more people would wake up and another thing that i do when i can which i try to wake people up but i do it kind of weird like because everybody's got a different approach first i ask the person hey do you believe me? this is going to sound weird i ask them if they believe in science fiction and they're like yeah and i'm like do you want to go down the rabbit hole yeah and they look at me and i'm like you want to wake up and they're like, okay. They either say okay or no. And then I start asking them the main questions about Febreze, Monopoly Man, you know, the, the basic big ones. And they're shocked when I tell them that it's changed. And they're like, they're on their phone looking. Oh, let me look, let me look. And the first thing they do is they have their cell phone and they're looking. And they're like in shock. And once they wake up, they're not going to ignore it. You know, see, once you, once you see it, you can't ignore it. Yeah, it's funny. Somebody put a post you know, on it. Somebody put a post on Facebook, uh, what, no, it was a couple weeks ago, and uh, I was just laughing because it made sense. It was Man it was put in a, a Mandela Effect group, and it's a picture of Alice from Alice in Wonderland, and she's talking to the rabbit, and she asked the rabbit, how far down does the rabbit hole go? And the rabbit answers, don't know, I haven't found the bottom yet. <laughs> oh, wow, wow. That's I, what I feel like. I feel like Alice in Wonderland. That's how I feel. Absolutely. I know it's a weird. Huh? You know, when it comes to people that say, you know, that there are those that they're traveling back in time and this is how things are changing, my first response to them is this. Okay, that's your theory. Now I want you to explain to me how they went back in time 
and move the continent of South America 2,000 miles east. Yes. I, I don't care how far yes. back in time you travel, you're not going to move a continent, you know? <laughs> I want to know how that's happening when, when they're the states, and, um, and they even said Italy is now shaped, not shaped like a boot no more. Is that true? What was that? Italy, they said it's not shaped like a boot no more. They said it's, it's different. Oh, uh, Italy? Italy has the, it has that shape of the boot, but the problem is uh, Sicily has moved uh, 300 miles north and has increased in size by probably tenfold. And now it's not wow. it's not away from Italy. You can literally see Sicily from Italy. You can take a boat and drive over there. And it's like oh, wow. almost the size of the bottom part of the boot now. It's almost like a, 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 a continent unto itself. It's so big. Wow. Yeah, I but saw... Even, it's like everything, not just logos and fonts. And it, it pretty much... And now me and Brian, we joke around a lot. I'm like, Ryan, I found another RA connected together. I don't know if you guys ever noticed the RA, but we noticed that a lot. The raw. Yeah. You know, it's we like... Little, we, Ryan and I are more into the logos and, you know, the movies and stuff like that. He doesn't really do very much geography, um, but he does do some of the Bible changes, uh, you know, when he talks to me. But he, him and I do most of the logos, and um, we even do live calls. I don't know if you ever caught the one we did on Fruit Loops. A while back, did you see that one? No, I didn't. I'll have to take a peek. <laughs> you gotta check that one out. We called a donut. Okay, I live in Las Vegas, like I told you. There's a couple donut stores called. Um, <laughs> they're called Voodoo Donut. You can also look it up. <laughs> there's one in California, Universal Studios, and I think there's another one in Oregon, and there might be one somewhere else. So Brian thought Brian and I is like, hey, let's do a cold call. And I'm like, okay. We call. We call the store called Voodoo Donuts. They happen to sell donuts with. You ready? Fruit Loops on the donut. I we get on the phone. You're gonna have. To, I wish you could. It, it's been his his group with his um, videos. I say, hey, I heard you sell you know donuts with Fruit Loops on. And the lady goes, yeah. I said, are these the same Fruit Loops that are on the shelf? Like. At Walmart and you know different grocery stores, and I said, "Are those the F R U I T L O O C S?" She's like, "Yeah," and I said, "The cereal?" She's like, "Yeah," and I said, "Oh my God!" And I'm getting like real excited, Brian's like trying to keep from laughing. Uh -huh. And I said, it, "And she literally, and I literally spelled it back to her like three or four times." And Brian is and Brian and I are like, "Does she like realize that it's not spelled for it looks like that no more?" We didn't want it. We didn't want to wake her up because in her mind, it's still Fruit Loops. Right. And we have the video on his, you know, if you go to the Brian McFarland, we have the live video. He has it somewhere in there that she literally, and she's a manager there, it said, as far, you know, I said F-R-U-I-T-L-O-O-P-S. And she agreed every time I said, I spelled it to her. And um, we like to do a lot of live videos because... If the person is not awoke, they're thinking that's the way it's spelled. Right. And even on the menu, if you look at their menu under Voodoo Donuts, uh -huh. it's even spelled Fruit Loops. It even spells it. Really? In the correct way. For, yeah. Look it up. It's like off the residue. And Brian was like shocked. And he's still laughing at me. He gets me in the video. <laughs> like so funny. I just hung up. We love doing that, and I did one for Chuck E. Cheese. I walked into a Chuck E. Cheese a few months ago, and I didn't tell him I was recording, and I walked in there, and I said, hey, I said, um, what's the name of this place? And he goes, Chuck E. Cheese? And I'm like, are you sure? No, no, wait, wait. Yeah, he said, Chuck E. Cheese, and I said, are you sure? And he goes, yeah, I work here. I said, okay, come on outside a minute. So he walked outside, and I said, look at what you're fine. And he looked at me. And I said, look what it says. It says Chuck E. Cheese it. And he looked and he goes, I said, I thought you just said Chuck E. Cheese. And he goes, I did. And he goes, they must have changed it. I said, oh, you've been working here uh, like seven, eight, nine years. And I'm like, it's always been Chuck E. Cheese. So I pull out my phone. I show him the residue. And he's like scratching his head. <laughs> he didn't have nothing else to say to me. He just kind of turned around and shook his head. We love doing cold calls because 
because you get people. I mean, another one that changed. I don't know if you remember. Remember the movie um, called um, Meet the Millers? Do you remember this movie? Hey. Where the group, it's like a family that they're not really a family. It was like Jennifer Aniston and they have to smuggle drugs over to Mexico. Do you uh -huh. remember that movie? Meet yeah, the I remember that movie. Do you know what changed? What? Look it up now. It changed to Where the Millers. I never existed. Meet the Millers never existed. Never. Really? Seriously. Oh, yeah. I found that. I found that one. And Brian was like freaking out. I called the library because I, I rent a lot of movies from the library because I like watching DVDs. I asked the lady, I said, where's, um, I want to watch Meet the Millers. And see, I had already watched it months before. I've already watched it and I know it was Meet the Millers. So I called and I said, hey, I'd like to um, request this movie for you to hold for me. And she looked it up. She goes, I can't find it. I said, are you sure? She's like, I know it's Meet the Millers. And I said, um, well, do a search under Millers. So where the Millers comes up and the poor lady at the library is like, that's not the name of it. And I said, I said, I know. And she goes, when did they change it? And I said, um, I don't, I can't answer that. And she just freaked out. And I said, okay, never mind then. Have a nice day. <laughs> yeah, it changed to where the Miller. That's a huge one, dog. Absolutely. Freaky, huh? Yeah, big time. All right, I just we brought this. All the time. I just brought this up. Um, yeah, let me see if I can get to it. Here we go. Um, into the live stream, I just brought up Voodoo Donuts for everybody to look at. And I'm looking at the donut yeah, right now, and it's got the Fruit Loops on it. And let me scroll up so everyone can see that. It says Voodoo Donuts, and it says Our Donuts. And when you scroll down, you get to, it's called, the donut is called The Loop. And it says Raised Yeast Donut with Vanilla Frosting and Fruit, F-R-U-I-T, Loops. There you go. I found that one. There That's you go. So everybody can see that. That's right there. Can you all see that? <laughs> That's what they call me the residue owner, sir. <laughs> there you go. Absolutely. Wow, that was that awesome. awesome. Absolutely. And let me turn that off. And if off. they want to find the video, tell them to go to um, the Brian McFarlane. You just have to Google his name and then go into his videos. Of like, <laughs> He's got like 900 and some videos. Yeah. But I'm in there somewhere. <laughs> somewhere if you look. <laughs> You'll see, like, Fruit Loops, Live Call, or something like that. Yeah. Um, I, lo I, love, I love Honey for Residue. It's like, it's like, it's like my, um, it's what I'm supposed to do. It's what I was blessed to do, and, and I do it because if there was no such thing as residue, then that means it never existed, right? Right. And think about it. And just like, um, just like um, Oscar Mayer, I freaked out a lady um, about a couple months ago. She's one of those, you know the people that stand there and they, they give out food and crackers and different yes. things and they stand there. Uh -huh. Like, here, try this, have some cute ones. I took her around the store showing her all the things that were wrong. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, look at Oscar Mayer. And she's like, what? And then I took her over to Fruit Loops. I took her around the store just giving her a tour of all the things that were wrong. And she's got her camera out taking pictures. I said, do you agree with me? She's like, yeah. Another one that freaked me out, I found proof of it. Marshmallows is now um, marshmallows. Mallows, yeah, I know. That's a huge one. And I found residue for Brian. And the thing is, if I'm ever given a challenge to find something, you better believe it. I'm going to find it. I am going to find it no matter what. And Brian, Brian sometimes will give me something really hard to find. And I'll say, Brian, sometimes I'll find it right away. And other times it'll take me longer to find. And sometimes there's not much residue on things. But usually if you look hard enough, and I use my different investigation skills like I was telling you, yeah. um, I will find it. From one way or another, if I stay up all night, I will find it because I know that that's the right thing to do. We have to remember our old ways because they're going to they're gonna try to change us so that we don't remember 
and it's not going to happen. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not going to happen. And I'm sure, I don't know, you've seen a lot of my residue that I've had, right? Yes. Bob? Yeah. Uh. Oh, these and cats. I know are... I've probably got competition out there. Other <laughs> people who look for residue, which I would love to talk to other residue hunters. I mean, if they want to come on the show on Brian's show, I would love to compare notes. <laughs> that would be fun. I love. I would love to meet another residue hunter and talk about things. Yeah, I did. I did a. Uh, I did a video. Um, I think it was uh, about a year and a half ago. And all the di all these different products and uh, TV shows and movies that have changed. And what I did was using my software, um, I showed the original of what it was, and then you would see it um, meld into what it is now. So you could literally see what it was and how it used to be, and then it would blend yeah. itself into what it is now so you can actually literally see the change. And like so it would occur right in front of your face to try to wake some people up, yeah. you know? Like morphing, right? Like yes. morphing. Morphing. That was the word I was looking I for. Happened to me. I had a box of cookies that I bought at Walmart and I told Brian about this. I I was looking at them on the shelf and they were like they were like um they call wedding cookies and Mexican nut cookies. And I took them home and I'm looking at the box and I'm like, Okay, good, no merging. I took them home, <clears> put them up in the shelf. And about 15 minutes, I was like, oh, I want to eat them. I took the box down, and the letters started merging in front of me in real time. Like in real time. I'm not talking about on the computer. I'm talking about a box in my hand merging. All right. You know the YouTuber. You know the YouTuber, Jacob Israel? Yes. Yes. I've he, seen some of his videos. He, he did a video a while back, and it was on... Uh, on the movie Apollo 13, where the line had changed, it went to Houston, we've had a problem, right? And uh, he had all these people attacking him about how it's always said had, it's always had it said had. And he even did a second video that said, no, it used to say Houston, we have, we, we have a problem. And now it says Houston, we had a problem. And he had all these people attacking him. And then it was like... It's had, isn't it? Yeah. Houston, we have, we have a problem? And now, this is what he, he, he recently did a video and showed it. And he said, for all of you that attacked me, he said, because you all swore up and down that it always said we had a problem. And then he played the clip because it's wow. changed back. Now it says, it's back to saying, Houston, we have a problem. And he said, for all you people, he goes, for all you people that attacked me, I want you to watch this because this is what the movie says now. And now it's now it's back to Houston. We have a problem. And he goes, so all of you that said that it always said had explain this, and not a single one of them made a comment back. Wow. You know. Have you had any um, logos change like flip flop on you? Um. Like, go back and like Flintstones, Flintstones, Tidy Cats. Flip -flop that's the one that got me. That was changing back and forth because that's what I buy for kitty litter. I buy the tidy cats in the in the in the container that's clumping. And then I go and it's tidy cat, and then it's tidy cats, and then it's tidy cat. And it's like, you know, I wish they'd make up their mind, you know? <laughs> I love it when it's a flop. It's fun. <laughs> wow. I don't... And you know what? I think Flintstones did that, too. What do you remember? Flintstones or Flintstones? Flintstones. Flint with a T? Yes, and it's, it's because everything in, in that whole cartoon everything was like you know uh the rubbles you know and, and everybody was yeah. you know mr slate everybody was named after some type of a rock so the flint stones yeah. were named after flint now it's flynn the, the tea's gone you know you had barney rubble betty rubble you had fred flint stones you had mr slate you know um they went to rock vegas you know i mean Everything was named after rocks because it was the Stone Age, you know? That was the big... So why would yeah. the Flintstones not have a T in it, you know? But... Uh, wait, I have a question. Weren't you... Didn't you I, I'm, I think I'm having deja vu here. Did you 
Did you do the radio show with Brian? I don't remember. I don't think so. Um, wait a second. I don't know why. I did a radio show I, with someone a, a couple of years back, and I was explaining the quantum effect. I don't, I don't know why, but your name, I just, I went to do a conference a couple months ago. I don't know if you remember that. You did like a conference? No, I wasn't in a conference a couple months ago. You were in a conference? No. I don't know why, I'm, just, I'm having like this deja vu. <laughs> it's like freaking out. Like, like you did a call with him or something on our show. I don't think you did though. No, okay. the only call in I ever did was a was uh, about two years ago, and it was for a uh, a radio blog, and uh, ah. they wanted me to explain uh, my research into the quantum effect and and how the LHCs could be part of this, you know. And I was yeah. onto something then, and it, it's still in the direction of where I'm going right now. But I'm seeing it more clearly because, uh, <clears throat> like I said, if you have all the ingredients to make something and then you remove half the ingredients, what you're going to make with the leftover ingredients is something different than what was originally made. And that would explain everything that's literally happening to us right now so that the past hasn't actually been rewritten. But everything in the present that has to do with looking back at the past has, including people's memories. So, uh, when, so when you see a video on... on can I ask how long you've been awake for? Can I ask how long you've been awake for? Uh, since, uh, wow, early 2015. It was like in June oh, or wow. July. And do you think we go to waves of people waking up? Yes, like, that absolutely. Like, like, people wake up, and then it stops, and then more people wake up. I Do noticed you think that's what's happening. Yes, and I noticed that, that that a large percentage of people that are awake, when you ask them, because I ask, is I got a group on Facebook called the Quantum Effect Concerning the Scriptures, um, and yeah. we we had, um, and this is a trip. We had uh, we had fifteen hundred members in the group. And the next day I went as the admin and I looked and we were down to 900. In one day, 600 people disappeared. I wondered if Facebook removed them, you know. But I don't know if 600 people just disappeared off, off of our group in one day. That just doesn't happen. You know what I mean? But, um, yeah. I'm going to talk about politics, but I'm going to say something really stupid. You mind if I say something stupid? Go right ahead. Is that okay? Absolutely. This is going to sound really off the wall. I'm probably going to get a lot of bad comments on this. Do you think Donald Trump is a Mandela effect? Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> I know that came out wrong. Sorry. No, I, I understand what you're saying. Um, I don't know. Uh, but I honestly believe if he's anything, he wasn't elected, he was selected. He was chosen. And. All the numbers that you see on TV when they were showing all the people and how they were, all those were made up numbers for you to believe that your vote counted. I, 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 I believe they've been I doing that for... I didn't vote at all for the election, so that's my bad. No, I didn't vote either because I looked at both choices and I went, neither one is who I want. What's the point? You know? I didn't want either one. No. I didn't want either one. And it's weird, now they're saying Oprah wants to run for president in 2020. Is that true? Uh, it's looking like that. But, I, you know, I don't even know if the United States is going to be here in 2020, you know? But, but yes. Do you, think we're here, do you think we're in tribulation right now? I absolutely 100% do. Um, I've done all, because, I, I mean... I got a video on my channel, and it's called My Story, and it's got a, a shocked-looking smiley face, you know, because my story is shocking. Uh, most people, 99% of the people out there did not walk the road that I walked, you know, or I wouldn't say that high, but it's really high, like 95%. Um, <clears throat> but I was locked up in prison for a few years, and when you first go in, you go into what's called classification, and you're locked up 22 hours a day in a six by eight by 10 foot cell. 
and you do have nothing to do. And my mom sent me a King James Bible, and she sent me an, a, 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 a Strong's Exhaustive Concordance, and a couple of aid books onto original Greek and original Hebrew. And all I would do every day for 11 months was I would go through the Bible line by line, verse by verse, even word by word. I would study it, and then I would write in these notebooks everything that I got out of it. And I would be in the Strong's Concordance. I would be in the original Hebrew. And then when I got done, I would rip it out of the notebook and I'd mail it off to my mother every day. So I got extremely, and this is in the 80s, and I got extremely versed in what the Bible said. That's why when I open the Bible and read it, I see the changes like the snap of a finger. I mean, I go, nope, that's wrong. I know that's wrong. You know? So. You're kind of like me, right? Like me, she's evil too. What's that? Meeks also sees the changes in the Bible. That's like Herman Della's specialty. I never hear her talk about like um, Moses and stuff like that. She just talks about the Bible. Yes. Meeks, uh, yes. So that's why I that's why I created that group, the Quantum Effect Concerning the Scriptures. And I know this from doing for having been involved in this since mid two thousand fifteen. Um, I've noticed, and I I I I've kind of caught eye on this. The largest percentage of people, when you ask, uh, when did you come awake? The, the big percentage of them say, oh, 2016. Yes. A yes. lot of people seem to, that seemed to be the year that, that they were awoken to all this. Um, mine happened yeah. because I was in the store and I was like, wow, when did they change that? And then when I looked oh, online, I was like, accidental. yeah, it was accidental, but it was... Yeah, it was in real life. It wasn't like I saw something on the internet. I mean, I literally saw this. And uh, it had to do with oh, Febreze. Wow. I went, where's the other E? And I went, where did they change that? You know, come to find out they never did. It's what always been it? one what E. Was it? What was it again? Febreze. The air freshener Febreze. Oh, the Febreze, yes. That was the yeah, first the one. Other e Febreze. Yeah, and then I ran into another one at the grocery store. And then I, then I started running. I was... Uh, on eBay and I was looking for something and I ran across another one and I went what is going on here and I was doing the research and I'm going no am I going nuts I mean I, I specifically remember it being this way and they're telling me it's always been that way and then one day I ran into a video from Photo Helix and I went I'm not the only one seeing this so this tells me I'm not nuts that's when I started to do the investigations and found out there was a whole lot more people out there that were seeing the same things I was, you know? <clears throat> and, and, then, and you know what? It helps that we have our community and our support system because I don't know what I would do if I didn't have everybody to support me with this because this is something hard to go. When you first wake up, you feel alone in this because people are going to think you're crazy trying to tell somebody what you're seeing. And I, this is, you know, I tell Brian, I said, this is the only, you know, you guys keep me stable. So I would go nuts. I, I don't, I, I have no way to explain it to anybody because they would look at you like, uh, what's this going on? You know what I mean? And I pretty much accepted it now. You know, when I see new changes, I'm like, okay, here we go again. You know, I'm not freaking out. I'm like, Brian, 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 like I normally do. <laughs> and, um, but it's hard. I mean, we should. Do you ever give advice to new people who are just now waking up? I mean, what what kind of advice can we give newcomers? Because we we we've been there. We've experienced what they're going through. Now we, we should have like a support group for like new people. You know what I mean? Like Photo Helix, I'm very faith based. You know what I mean? Um, and, and when I speak to the new people. They're, they literally are. They come. They come to this group right here, this live stream, and they're like freaking out, you know. And I, I keep telling them that 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 God has chosen you to open your eyes for reason and purpose, and know that we're in the last days. And when you see these changes, rather than be worried, just look up and keep your eyes focused on your King, you know. And everybody in this group. You know, that comes to this live stream, they come and they, whoever comes in and they're freaking out about this, everyone speaks to them and comforts them and kind of leads them to calm them down, you know, and lets them know 
they're among yeah. friends right now that that believe this and see the same yeah. things that they do. You know. that I've heard what you just said about we need to we need to ground them so that they're not freaking out. They need support and love and like, okay, we're going to help you get through these. Because like I said, there's different stages. Did you go through the stages? The different stages? When you woke up? With me, it was like at first I was like, you know, um, I was questioning my own sanity. I'm going, I, I, I remember this different. Why am I remembering it different? I couldn't understand. Um, and I thought I was, I thought there was, you know, even my family was like, you know, you're, there's something wrong with you, man. That's, that, it's never been that way. Why are you even saying this? And, and, and then when I ran into photo, when I saw that there's someone else seeing and the exact same things as I was seeing in scripture, you know, and, uh, yeah. it, it put me at ease. I was like, now I know this is real because there's someone else that's seeing the exact same things as I am. And once I started, that, that's exactly how I felt. I was questioning my sanity. I'm like, am I going nuts? I mean, I'm 57 years old. I've never went through anything like this before in my whole life. But I'm like, why now? I'm in my 50s. Am I experienced in this? I keep calling it paranormal. For me, that's the only way I can explain this is paranormal. And why am I going through this? And why is this happening? I mean, I still want to. I still want to figure out. Why is this happening? And I keep coming up with all these different theories. I, you know, I like you were telling me the quantum thing. And do you think the truth will ever come out? Well, yeah. Why it's really happening? Are we just going to be experiencing the Mandela effect day after day after day and seeing no ending? Uh, I mean, will we eventually get an answer? Yes, we uh, will. We, we absolutely will. I believe. I honestly believe, and I've got I've got videos on this. I did. I mean. With all the research that I've done, you know, in, in, into end times prophecy and throughout the Old Testament, into the New Testament, uh, Ezekiel, Zechariah, Daniel, Micah, uh, in, I mean, all of it. I've, and, and everything that I've done, even into the book of Enoch, where it speaks about there will be 70 generations to the end and until the, 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 the fallen angels, the watchers, will be released unto the world, which the 70th generation hit. When all when the technology explosion occurred around the world, and that was in the nineteen the early nineteen hundreds. Um, but I've done all the math. The hundred and twenty generate, you know, the hundred and twenty years that God says that He will, you know, uh, deal with man. Uh, the seventy, the fifty, the the the, the, the fifty year jubilee of the taking of Jerusalem. Seventy years from uh, uh, the creation of Israel. Uh, and I go through all of these numbers and everything, and I go up to um, the eclipse that happened on August 21st. And yes. the sign of Jonah, and people are going, oh, that's three days in the belly of the whale. No, no, if you could go, if you literally could go into a time machine and go back to uh, the days that Christ walked around, and you asked all of the rabbis and all the Jews um, in those days, what was the sign of Jonah? Every one of them would have said to you, oh, that's the eclipse that, heard, that happened over Nineveh that changed everybody's hearts. Now, Jonah showed up to Nineveh and he said, you have 40 days to repent. And if you don't, God will destroy you. And the 40th day landed on the Day of Atonement. And the whole city had repented so God didn't destroy it, which really pissed Jonah off. He was mad. He wanted those people dead because he hated them. Um, he's the weirdest prophet in the world because... The people that he was preaching to, he literally hated, you know. But it was 40 days from the day that he announced to them, um, you have 40 days to repent. And that landed on the Day of Atonement. Our eclipse that crossed the United States, 40 days after that, uh, actually 33 days after that, was uh, the Revelation 12 sign. And 40 days after that eclipse was Day of Atonement once again. And I honestly believe September 30th of 2017 was the beginning of tribulation. And here's the deal. Will we ever find out what's happening and causing this? Yes, because tribulation ends. Christ comes back and makes all things right. And we will be made aware of everything that's happened. So we'll know. But it's not going to be now. But it will be coming soon. you know, we, we talk a lot about the Mandela effect. Do you think they'll get 
Oh, I'm. Oh, I'm. No, I'm absolutely certain. I think the reason why we're continuing to see small Mandela effects happen here and there is because the other LHCs around the world are still running and still crashing particles together. But uh, this March, CERN is supposed to start back up at their highest level ever and crashing millions upon millions more particles than they ever did before at higher velocities. So uh, what I'm figuring is come March... Uh, I have to look it up. I, I know the date. I'm just brain farting on it, but I know it's in the beginning of March. And I'm going to tell you what, I'll, I'll, I'll bet bottom dollar says that uh, after they do that, you're going to start seeing big changes again. I'm certain of that. So we're probably going to be increasing with more Mandela effects then, probably even around March. I'm expecting, okay. I'm seeing changes that are still occurring, small ones here and there, but I'm expecting sometime in March, maybe towards the end of March, we're going to see big changes, and, and all of a sudden, you're going to see YouTube filled with all these videos about all these big changes and how they've changed now. I'm, I'm almost certain of that. Candy Cupcake says. Yeah, I think the only way that we're going to wake people up, because if you know a lot of these changes that we've had, you know, in the past, been like subtle changes, I think in order to wake somebody up, it's going to have to be a huge Mandela where they're not going to be able to ignore it. It's got to be right in their face. Does that make sense? Yes, but at the same time. I think that's the only way we're going to wake somebody up. As if it's huge enough where they cannot deny it. <clears throat> but like we talked yeah. earlier, there are those that are, that are just so locked into the system, so hooked into it, so asleep, that um, when this change happens, they're going to get a mental update, and it's going to go, oh, it's always been that way. Oh, I can, my God. You know, you're going to... Well, gonna... yeah, my car is black. The next day I came out, and now it's purple. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh-huh. What's he say now? He says, I'll be back. I'll be back. Listen to it. There's no he he has changed. that he has that heavy accent and he goes, I'll be back. It's gone. It's gone. Play it now. Wow. Yeah. Remember I'll be back? Yeah. The line and I have found residue. <laughs> Fierce residue. For that. And now he says, I'll be back. Um, another movie found the other day was, um, oh, what's his name? You remember how they have a Mandela about the Jackson 5 and now they have Randy, who's supposedly supposed to be the youngest child? Yeah, now it's the, it's like, why didn't you call yourself the Jackson 6? We got huge, I found huge residue on that. Um, you remember the guy, oh God, what is his name? It's going to me crazy. The Jello Pudding Man? Um, oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, the guy that, uh... There's a video where he says, who are you again? I don't remember you. I found huge residue of him interviewing Randy, <laughs> and this is years ago. Look, I don't know who you are. He literally said that. Wow. I found residue for that, yes. Look, if you can bring up Brian's videos, I don't know if you're able to do that. Look for the one that talks about the residue 
for um, the Bill Cosby one. He literally did not know who Randy Jackson was. And I said, Sam, there you go, Brian. And this is when, this is years ago when they were young. He didn't know who he was. He goes, what do you do again? And he literally says it. Yeah. That was awesome as a do I found for him. Yeah, I'll take a look. I'll, uh, tomorrow, I'll, I'll, I'll go over to his channel. I'll take a look at a few of them, and I'll set it up so that we can watch them in the live yeah. stream. A lot of the residue that I find, I, I find for Brian. Yeah. Um, and I'll either get credit for it or somebody else that found it, and then I'll be like, hey, Brian, look. But a lot of times, I'll find you know really good residue. Like in Glee, they actually sang the end of the song, you know, we are the champions of the world. Right. But here's the trick. They actually do say it, but it's only in the live version of We Are the Champions. I yes. found that out. Yes. That they do they do say it, but only in the live version. Yeah, I know. I've seen so that. The way that wasn't really a Mandela effect. I seen that, but the reason why I know that that's changed is because uh this is when I was a teenager, I'm, I'm aging myself, <laughs> when the album first came out. Yeah. I bought the album for my sister for Christmas, and uh, uh -huh. but I opened it up and I and I and I was playing that song over and over and over and over and over and over and over until my mom found out what I did and told me I had to go buy a new album because I couldn't I couldn't give her that one. I said I was just checking it for skips, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so yeah, I I knew that song inside and out, and when that disappeared, I went yeah. And I told Photo, I said, I know why they took that out. And he said, why? He said, because they're saying we are the champions of the world. But the Antichrist is claiming he's the champion of the world, so no one else is allowed to say that. Uh, there, <laughs> there is residue for that on, um, on um, what do you call it, Glee, where they actually say it at the end. If yeah. you go to Glee and Google Glee, we are the champions, you'll hear it at the end. I found that residue. There you go. That's one of mine. <laughs> I, find, <laughs> I find residue in the weirdest places, like seriously. I mean, and Brian's like, how do you find this? I'm like, my destiny? <laughs> it's what I'm supposed to do, is find it? Yeah. Hey, very and much so. That may be what, that may be, that may be what God has chosen you to do. You know, that's what your mission in this world yeah. is. He's it, led yeah, he's led me to I do didn't this. Think I would be calling tonight, did you? No, I'm glad you did. You know, and normally I I, I try to break the the live stream up to one hour segments. You know what I mean? So that anybody that oh, wants. I'm sorry, I didn't even... Oh no I'm no! Sorry. Let me finish what I was saying. I would break it up into one hour segments so that anybody that comes to the channel after the live stream is over, they could actually go through and pick whatever one they want to watch. They don't have to watch one five or six hour long live stream. But this has been such a great conversation. I'm like, ah, we're going to let this go. So we're running up on two hours now. I, did, I didn't know if he had heard of me or not because I know a lot of people in the Mandela Effect family knows me because I've gone on Scared Show for the first time last week. Yeah. You, you weren't there, were you? Last week? Yeah, I was. I I run this, this were you live stream. There? Yes, and I heard you speak, and you were talking about how you find these and everything in the oh, quotation okay. marks. That's where I know you from. Yeah, you were, you were there with, with Party Puppy there, or um, Salted Cedar. Salted Cedar was there. Party Puppy was there. A bunch of a lot of people. Uh, virtually everybody that comes to this live stream is over at Scarabs on Saturday night. So I run this one. Uh, I come live at 9.45. I start the pre-show at 9.30 to give people time to get here. And uh, I run it from 9.00. Nine... He's so scared that I was on tonight, if you want to. Oh, absolutely. He'll probably show up sometime later on tonight anyway. He usually shows up around 3 or 4, you know. Can I tell you, can I tell you something that happened to me the other day? I don't know if I, I'm kind of embarrassed. So, you know how Brian has a live show every Friday? Yes. At 9.30? Well, I'm sitting there, and, you know, I'm usually in the background, and I don't really say much. That's why you don't hear me say very much until he asks me, hey, do you have anything to say? And I'm like, yeah, da, da, da. I'm usually just sitting there being quiet, listening to everybody, going back and forth, and, you know. And I'm sitting there, I have my phone plugged in, charging it, and I'm sitting on my couch trying to listen to the, the show. 
I fell asleep in the middle of Brian's show. <laughs> I literally calmed out on my couch, woke up at 10.30, and I walked over to my phone. I'm like, oh, my God, I fell asleep on the show. <laughs> I fell asleep, and I was so hey, embarrassed. You, you... The next day, I told Brian, Brian's like, what happened to you? And I'm like, uh, I passed out. <laughs> I passed out in the middle of the show. Yeah, Awakened Saint just put it said, Paul Adams falls asleep. Um, Scarab can tell you about this one. Uh, this was about, I don't know, what was it, people, about a month ago? And uh, I had been uh, up for like 48 hours, you know? And I'm doing this show, and it's going all night long. And it, it's about 5, 5.30 in the morning. I've been up for, what, 56 hours now. And Scarab's talking away. Wow. He's, he's the guest on the show. And I'm the host. And I fell asleep. <laughs> I woke up at like 10 o'clock. Oh you fell asleep on your own show? Yeah, I fell asleep on my own show. <laughs> <laughs> well, heck, I don't feel bad now. <laughs> yeah, everybody's commenting in there. Well, actually, I woke up and it was like 7 in the morning. And I went, oh, I got to shut this down. Everybody was gone by then. But, uh, yeah, yeah, all the comments was... was on Brian's show on Friday, too. You know that, right? What? Friday. No, I didn't know, but he was on my show last night. Oh, he's, he's just going to everybody's show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was on. He was there. We had a coma patient. He was on. He was in a coma that woke up for, I think it was four months. So he was talking about his experience, which is basically what he said was, oh, it was like being asleep. And I was like, Brian, that's all he had to say. The guy was in his 70s. And I felt bad because I was all excited, like, oh, he saw, he had an out-of-body experience, you know, I'm thinking all this stuff. Oh, no, it was like being asleep. No, he's right. I, was... I felt bad because I told Ryan, I said, that's all he had to say. Yeah, I, I was in a deep coma for six weeks, and uh, I have oh, no, God. I have no memory. Did you see anything? I have no memory of, of the coma, but I remember um, they never expected me to come out of it. They thought I was going to be a vegetable. Um, cause I had cracked my skull what? open in three places and my brain had swelled oh my God. and well, um, when I woke up, it isn't like you see on TV where you wake up. It literally took hours upon hours of this process of trying to come awake where everything was coming in colors and flashes in and out and it was real blurry and then it would come wow. clear and then it would go blurry again. I couldn't talk. I, I didn't know how to, to form words. I had to. Basically, it, it's this long process of coming to, you know. And when I finally came to, the doctor was over me and he said, you lived. <laughs> wow. So it's hard to explain to a person what it's like in a coma. I mean, you might have felt something different than the guy that was on. You know what I mean? Well, I don't know. Is it scary? Like... See, what happened to me was it was during the MASH bash, and I was uh, drunk at the bar, and they were out of cigarettes in the machine when they had machines. Um, so I left the bar, and I went across the street to where the pharmacy was, and I got a pack of smokes. And as I was walking back towards the bar, I'm drunk. A guy left the bar about a mile down the road. He was drunk. He was doing about 48, 49 mile an hour, and I stumbled out in the road, and he hit me. And I broke 27 oh bones. God. I broke 27 bones in just a couple of minutes. Um, I was a mess. Um, yeah, that's in, in that video of my story. And that night when I was in surgery, uh, my sister was woken up. She was in, in bed with her husband. And uh, the room filled with light. And she woke up. And there was someone sitting at the end of the bed. And she went to fall out of bed and fall to her knees. And... and, and the messenger said, I'm just a messenger. I'm not your Lord. Sit down beside me. So she did. And the messenger told her what happened to me, what hospital I was in, what surgery room I was in, and what the phone number was to the hospital. And then he told her, then he told her um, that fear not, I was not going to die because God had great things in store for me. And then he disappeared. She in turn picked up the phone, called my mother. And then my mom called the hospital and they said, absolutely, we have a John Doe in that surgery right now that was hit by a car. And yes. And they said, 
does does he have a particular faith because they do they don't believe he's going to survive and my mom told him i have it on good authority he's going to live so don't worry about it <laughs> wow that was a guardian angel i bet yeah absolutely i believe that everybody has either one guardian angel or several around them and they're always there watching over you i believe that Oh, scripture says that, that everyone has a guardian angel over them. Yes. I believe that my father's around me because I I just get this feeling that he's been around me because my dad passed in 2002 in a nursing home. Yeah. On a massive stroke. And, of course, my mom's been dead since 1991 from lung cancer. But I get this feeling that my father's watching over me. Yeah. I really do. And, and, and it's, you know what, we should feel blessed that people are watching over us. You know what I mean? Yes. That's, that's really good. <laughs> well, we're running in about two what hours. What time zone are you in? Huh? What time zone are you in? I'm in the Eastern time what zone. What time zone are you in? I'm in the Eastern time zone. Huh? I'm in Erie, Pennsylvania. I'm uh, about 27 oh. miles away from Canada. Oh, Brian's from the East, too. Brian's from uh, Georgia. Oh, okay. And I'm West Coast. So I'm in Las Vegas, Nevada. There you go. I have, uh, uh, we have friends of the family that live in Las Vegas. They've been there for, I don't know. Oh, really? What part? Uh, what part? I can't remember offhand. I haven't talked. I, my dad talks to them. Um, I haven't talked to them in 20 years. <laughs> oh, wow. Have you been to Vegas before? Uh, yeah, I was, I've been to Vegas twice. Uh, once, uh, while I was there, I don't have very good memories of it because uh, that was back when the, when you'd go into the casinos and they would give you uh, free liquor as long as you continued to gamble. Yeah, and, and, changed. Yeah, it was it was pretty much a, a, a one drunk week. <laughs> wow. And then the other time I was you there. Know, did you ever talk about what happened um, on the strip? About I don't know if it was ever brought up about the shooting. Do you remember that? Yeah. Uh, I had, um, I was trying to explain one time in Scarab's video about it, but nobody wanted to listen to me. But I had, a, I have a friend at work. She's actually a higher up person. Her sister and two of her sister's friends were at the event when it happened. And I was trying to explain to Scarab about this. Her friend, one of her friends got shot. And the other one got shot as well. One of her friends died. This, I know they want to say that this is fake. It was not fake. No. The girl that works with me, the sister, yeah, it was real. Oh, I absolutely agree fake. with you. Everybody's going, oh, nobody died. I'm going, yeah, they did. Uh, and, and, and I keep telling people, you seem to think that these elites that are actually staging these false flag attacks care about you so much that they're going to spend millions and millions and millions of dollars to fake everyone's death when they can just go ahead and do it and kill all the people they want and it's it's still a false flag you know and, and my and one of the things i yeah. kept pointing out to people is i want you to think about this when the shooting started and when they realized shooting was going on the event turned all the lights on yes why would you do that and unless you were Yes. 15 minutes prior to the shooting. Yeah. He told, he told me about that. I'm like, what? He said, yeah, I was there that night. And he says, I was told to lock some of the gates 15 minutes before the shooting. I'm like, well, why would they tell you to do that? He says, I have no idea. But he got out of there. Um, and he said he wasn't the only security guard told to lock the gates. There were other ones that were told to lock other gates. And I'm like, wait a minute. That's. <laughs>
FBI sting operation to do with the guns, and I, I don't know what to believe. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, because when you see all these different stories, there's a lot of cover-ups. Yeah. Hey, all right, we're running at two hours and five minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and shut down the live stream and let it upload to the oh, channel. Sorry. Oh, don't worry about I'd it. I'd like to come on your show again. Oh, absolutely. The phone is always open whenever you want to call. Um, I, I really enjoyed myself. Um, but, but like I said, um, check out check out the videos that I was telling you about on Brian's um, channel. That he's got them all there. Yeah, I will do and, that. Friday night, and you're welcome if you want to come in and chat. I'm sure Brian would probably love to have you. Have you been on Brian's show before? Uh, actually, no, I haven't. I was just made aware of you guys um, the other night when I was on Scarab show. Oh. But I'm going to tell you what, something that, oh, really? something that Dan and I are, were talking about last night, um, and we're really seriously going to uh, talk privately, uh, not on you know about this, but we're thinking on maybe... Uh, getting something set up where we can have a, a, a conference for the Mandela Effect. Oh, that would be awesome. Um, I do want to mention one more thing before we go. This is very important to okay. you and all your listeners. The X-Files this week yes. is going to have the Mandela sh show. It's going to be on the 24th. I believe it's 8 o'clock my time because I'm on the West Coast on Fox. It's going to be, it's going to have the Mandela effect in it. Now, I don't know how, how they're going to present it, whether they're going to be making fun of us or it's going to be serious. I didn't get to see any previews of the show, but I think we should all join in to watch it. You know, everybody watch it and see what happens. And then we got the new movie coming out sometime in 2018. I don't know too much about it, but, um, Brian's, uh, friends with the, the, um, the director, David Guy Levy. And supposedly, Mario is going to get an interview with him um, once the movie gets going. Um, Brian's going to try to get an interview with him, which the guy promised that he would do an interview with Brian. Um, Brian has, oh, another thing is, um, you guys might want to send, um, like, um, prayers. Cynthia Sue Larson is sick right now. You guys know who she is? She's a very um, famous author to do with um, the Mandela effect and quantum and everything. And right now she's sick. I don't know the whole story about why she's sick, but supposedly she's sick right now, and I need to find out more. But um, you might want to look into that as well. All right. Prayers for her. You know. Um, but yeah, I think we should all watch the X Files. I'm. I think I, mean, I don't know if Brian's going to go live or not. I'm going to ask him because he's three hours ahead of me. Yeah. I'm at work at five o'clock when he's watching it. But I think it would be interesting if you want to record it, maybe, and you know, talk about the show. That would be something you and Eric could talk about. There you and go. How it's taken, I don't know how they're going to, I don't know how it's going to be taken, how they're going to do the show, whether it's going to be serious, making fun of us. I, I don't know yet, but I'm curious to watch it, and I'm real excited about watching it. And that'll be the 24th um, at 8 o'clock, I believe, uh, Fox. But I did want to mention that to you. All right, fantastic. Anyway, watch it. <coughs> All right, then, let me... Um, Back on again. Oh, I enjoyed myself. The phone is always um, open here, you know. Um, that's what this is all about. I'm really nervous, but I'm getting good at this. <laughs> there you okay, go. Some your practice. <laughs> um, and I apologize again to anybody that I fell asleep. If you were listening to Brian's show, yes, I did conk out somewhere between halfway through the show. <laughs> but I must have been really tired. <laughs> all right. I'm embarrassed. Oh, don't worry about it. Like I said, I yeah. fell asleep on my own show one time. You know. <laughs> Help Garib, I said hi. Remind him to watch the show as well. Um, and I look, when is he doing another live call in? Who? I get confused with all his shows. Who? I Here, didn't... when's he doing another live call in? Uh, on his show will be this coming Saturday. Oh, they don't do that tomorrow, do they? Uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't watch the Mandela Monday. I got other stuff going on, but I'm there on the Saturday show. I don't know if he does call-ins on that one or not. Um, I'm sure he probably I does. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he does. Um, but I'm, 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 I
keep up with I can't keep up when everybody shows they're on. The only way I can know is when I get like a reminder on my phone that's oh yeah, they're live. I'm like, okay. Is that a call in or not a call in? <laughs> well in my case, um it's every day, uh Sunday night through Friday night, starting at nine forty five when we go uh, into the wee hours in the morning, four, five, six in the morning, uh, every night, except on, except on Saturday. Um, then I wait until, uh, Scarab show is over because I go over to his live stream and I may, uh, pop over to Brian's also and slide in there. But the reason why I do that is I, I want to keep the doors open to anybody so that they can come here and fellowship yeah. and, and not feel alone, that the doors are always open, you know? I wanted to thank you for letting me come on and talk and, um, and, and, you know, talking about my experiences, you know, like I said in the last year. And I'm sure I'm going to have more weird things happen, especially what happened earlier listening to the video and then it changing within five minutes. I was like, how can that happen? You know what I mean? That fast. Yeah. Like literally, you know, you listen to something and it changes. It's like it's, it doesn't want you to hear their the truth. And want you to hear it, it's like, no, no, no. It's supposed to be this way. And it's really bizarre, you know? Yeah. It's trippy how things are happening. Like, you know, you've, you've gone through all the, all the different paranormal things, right? Oh, yeah. Tons. And I think that comes along with the Mandela effect. Because we're so awake that we see all these different changes. And I, like you said, I know there's going to be more coming, you know? But we just got to pray and be patient and um, just go along with the ride. I mean, what else can we do, right? That's it. Live every day to the fullest. You got it. Yeah. All right, I'm going to... I'm going to... I'm going to... One more thing before I go. Besides the Mandela effect, guess, guess what um, changed in my body? What? It's going to blow you away. What? My ass has disappeared. You're what? I had full blown ass, but I couldn't even walk up yet. I used to walk up my stairs, and I would, because I, you know, I live upstairs, and my stairs are indoors. I walk up the stairs, and I was like, <gasps> out of breath. I literally had to carry an inhaler around with me everywhere I went. Do you want to hear something? What? My asthma has disappeared. Really? My, my asthma has never, it's gone completely. Completely gone. I can walk a mile, two miles, and not be out of breath. That's awesome. Completely disappeared. That's a good thing that came out of, besides, you know, being closer to God, it's also my health has improved for yeah. the better. I think maybe God had a hand in that one. <laughs> yes. And I thank him. I'm like, my God, my asthma's gone. And it's weird. Our bodies are being upgraded. Yeah. And I'm wondering if that was part of the upgrade with my asthma disappearing. I don't know. Mm -hmm. All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and shut this live stream down and uh, let it upload to the channel, and then I'll restart probably in about five to ten minutes. So stick around in the live I really, chat. I want to thank you for letting me come on your show. Oh, absolutely. You have a wonderful and if night. If anybody wants to get a hold of me, they can get a hold of me through Brian, because I really, I'm not on Facebook no more, because I don't have no room on my phone. But if anybody wants to get a hold of me, um, go through Brian McFarland. Um, and he will get the message to me because we're in touch every day. I'm bothering the poor guy. All right, cool. All right, you have a good night. And, um, you have a good night and stay in the live chat, and we'll be talking to you over there. Thank you. God bless you, and I really enjoyed myself. Oh, thank you. God bless you. Good night. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Good night. Good night. There you go, folks. Boy, and we went long on that one, but it was worth it. It was an awesome caller. So once and again, um, I'm going to shut the live stream down, let it upload to the channel, and once it's uploaded, <coughs> I'll then go live again. And remember, if you don't see the live stream, um, refresh your browser or open up a new tab. So um, peace, my brothers and sisters.